Hello everybody and welcome to another Vintage Story tutorial. If you clicked on this video, then you are probably new to Vintage Story, have no idea what's going on, and are feeling completely overwhelmed. This tutorial is aimed to make your Vintage Story journey just a little bit less overwhelming. This is going to be a pretty freeform video, but there are three main points that I want to make sure that we focus on. 1. Not starving to death. 2. Creating weapons and equipment. And 3. Creating a shelter with fire and light. I'm going to be starting a brand new world, all the settings are going to be their default settings, and there's not going to be any mods or anything like that, so we should be on the same playing field. So I'm going to start this up and I will see you at the character creation screen. And here we are! You're going to be greeted with a beautiful mug, similar to this one. They are randomly generated right out the gate, and quite frankly, this guy's speaking to me. It says his expression is very sad, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing sadness in those eyes. I'm seeing a yearning for something more. Anyway, you can do whatever you want with your guy. The one thing I recommend is saxophone very low. You gotta do it, you know? Uh, look at how we look dressed, looking good, looking dapper. We're gonna confirm. Then we're gonna be greeted with a bunch of classes. Again, I'm assuming it's your first time playing Vintage Story. Don't even worry about the rest of these. Uh, just choose commoner. You can worry about the classes in the future. There's going to be enough that you have to do that we don't need that added class meta on top of everything. Uh, so let's get going. Couldn't have said it better myself, very low sax man. So the very first thing I recommend is checking out the settings. Uh, if you go to the interface, make sure that the block info overlay and block interaction help are both on. Uh, as well as the minimap. So the minimap's gonna be this in the top right. These block info things are gonna be, see how if I hover over this loose flint, then it uh, shows that if you are holding it and then press left control and right click, you can nap with it. Otherwise, you can just right click to pick it up. Helpful if you are looking at something for the first time. Additionally, if I right click and pick it up, I'm going to have down here, if I hover over it with my mouse, a little tooltip that says what well, you can do with flint, which in this case can be napped into slightly better stone tools and weapons. And this is a, a great start. Uh, this is one of the things you're definitely going to want to be looking out for right out of the gate. Is any flint stones, <laughs> any flint stones that you may find on the ground? Because here, I'll show you. Once you have two or more flint, if you crouch, look at the ground, and right click, then this menu is going to appear. You can create axes, hoes, knives, shovels, spears, and arrowheads uh, in this napping menu. I recommend creating a knife first and foremost. So if we click on this, it's going to bring up these orange blocky guys. We have to destroy all the orange blocks, and as you can see, the shape of the knife blade is what we've created here in the middle so if we go through and break all of these uh, one quick trick is that if you isolate any of these uh, they'll all disappear so as soon as I break this since these three rows are isolated they'll break apart boom so just focus on the center areas and it'll speed up your crafting a lot um, so we'll create a knife blade I would also recommend creating an axe head because we're gonna want to chop down trees in order to make a fire for the night and I'm not going to make it here, but I would also recommend a shovel if you want to build a little dirt hut. Uh, we might make one in a little bit, but we're going to wander around. We're going to keep looking for flint. We can't actually turn these into tools yet because we don't have any sticks. Uh, however, there's sticks all around us in these trees. So uh, you can find sticks on the ground around trees sometimes. It looks like we don't really... Maybe down there in the forest we could find some. Uh, or you can find them in bushes or you can just find them in the tree leaves. So if we look in these tree leaves, you can see that these are maple branchy leaves. It's those branchy leaves that you're looking for. And if you actually look in there, you can see that there's branches inside of these leaves. Uh, and if you break them, look at that, a stick drops. Once we have them, just like in Minecraft, we take that knife blade, we're gonna put a stick on top of it and we're gonna create a knife. We're going to do the same for our axe head here. Now, unlike in Minecraft, you have a 3x3 three three crafting bench by default. You don't need to craft anything additional in order to create that. That is the one and only convenience that Vintage Story is going to give you over Minecraft. Everything else is going to kill you. So enjoy that. 
And uh, yeah, over here we've got some berries. If we look at this green bar down here, this is your hunger bar. And once it reaches all the way down to the bottom, uh, you're gonna start starving to death. This red one is your HP bar. And when it reaches all the way to the bottom, you're going to die. So uh, what we can do is we can find berries. And this is a red currant berry. If we hover over it, we can see all sorts of information about it. Fresh for two days. That means after two days, they're going to spoil and you will not be able to eat them. They will give you 80 sat. The hell does that mean? Well, the green bar is also referred to as satiation. So not necessarily a hunger bar. It's going to recover 80 satiation. And so as you could see, as I eat these, the green bar is continuing to rise. We are not going to starve to death today. Now, another thing I recommend whenever you find berries early on, uh, you can break them. Now, this is a flowering berry, but we can see that there are no berries on it and that it will ripen in eight days. Uh, but it is a red currant bush which is the same as this one. And so we're gonna break this as well. We're not gonna be sticking around for eight days. Here's some cranberries. I recommend picking these, um, but sticking to a single berry bush to collect simply because we have limited inventory space. I like the red currant bushes. Um, if we look at these, cranberries only give 60 satiation, whereas red currants give 80. So cranberries are the worst of the berries. Take that however you will. If you can only find cranberries, it's certainly better than nothing. Uh, but I recommend any of the other berries if at all possible. And the currant variants are particularly useful because you can stack the bushes on top of one another to create a nice, convenient, and compact berry farm. If we look over here, we've got our first instance of wild crops. And in this case, we've got some rye. Rye is a type of grain that you will find. And if we hover over it, we can see that the growth stage of this is six out of nine. For this one, six out of nine, they look the same. This one looks a little different and it's a growth stage of eight out of nine. So still not fully grown. This is a fully grown piece of rye. Growth stage nine out of nine. And if we break this, it will give us some rye grain. Break any of these other ones and they, you won't get any rye grain, but you may get rye seeds. So if I break this, there's the grain. So we got some rye grain, we got some rye seeds. We can eat the grain uh, for 60 satiation and it goes into the food category grain as opposed to our berries which are food category fruit i recommend not eating the grain and saving it for making bread in the future only because 60 satiation really isn't a lot you won't be able to make bread for a while but you might as well save it up as you're exploring out here for now and even though this is eight out of nine we're not coming back here so let's just break it and hope we get some seeds from it seeds we got seeds from all of them that is not always the case um, but we did in this case, so when we actually create a shelter, we'll be able to plant those uh, in the future and make a rye farm. So one thing you're going to start to notice is that your inventory is filling up very quick. Now there are things that we can do early on to give us more storage. And the crop that we are looking for is right down there. It's cattails. This might hurt. Nope. We're good these guys so these are cattails everybody knows what a cattail is right at least here in the midwest of america we certainly do uh if you break these with your hand it'll take a little bit but you will get a cattail however you can break them quicker with a knife yeah like so and you'll see that the root remains you can also harvest the root with your knife now, I don't have enough storage space for this, but this is what the root looks like. And you can use this to cook into food once we have a campfire, um, or you can replant them back at your home base, which I I would recommend um, if you don't have any around you. Uh, it's just an easy way to get cattails. You can never have enough cattails in the early game. You're gonna use them for all kinds of things. Look at more, more rye. So pick up any sticks you find, pick up any flint you find. And the third thing I would recommend is harvest a bunch of cattails with your knife. All right, so I was actually only able to get 33, but this is enough for me to display the point I was trying to make, which is if you open up your crafting table and you place the cattails in a use shape with 10 of them, two in each stack, you will create a hand basket. Take this hand basket, place it down here in these little basket slots and you will see that three additional slots have appeared in your inventory. It allows you to carry, obviously, a whole lot more, uh, probably about double. 
Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. More than double uh, what you start with. So this is one reason why cattails are so incredibly important. So I've gathered 24 cattails. And if we take them and open up the crafting bench and we put them similar to how we would create a chest in Minecraft, look at that. We can create a reed chest, which has a maximum storage slots of eight. So these don't go in the basket slots like the basket did. However, you can place it on the ground and you can open it up. And look at that. You've got a basket that you can place contents in. So at this point, I would recommend starting to look for a base, a base in which we can hunt around, we can explore around, and we can continue to build out of. So where should you build? Well, inevitably it's up to you. I would recommend building by water so that you can make a farm as well as an area that's flat. That's generally what I'm looking for. This kind of looks like a cool area. So I'm gonna head that direction. It looks far away. It's really not that. That's a bear. That's a bear. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh god, the good lord. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hopefully he gets slowed down in the water. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Holy shit, I'm gonna die. Oh my god. We're gonna juke him. Don't worry, we're gonna juke the bear. You gotta jump. You gotta be very careful. Surely he's not following me anymore. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's some of the fun. Uh, bears will kill you. They will maul you to death. And they are faster than you. So that water, I think, was very important in slowing him down. Look at this. This is the area I was talking about. And it's as beautiful as I could have hoped for. It doesn't have a ton of ferns. Like over here, that's kind of gross looking. We've just got dry grass, which is going to be very useful. And we've got this nice little pond, which we can turn into a farm because we don't have a bucket yet to pick up water to actually move it around. So we can use this to create a really early on farm, which we won't be getting into today, but just know that it is nice to have water close by for that reason. So we have an ax, we have a knife, we have a place for a base, and it's starting to get nighttime. Um, I would recommend breaking some trees with the ax. we've broken down that tree we've gotten some sticks from it as well as some birch logs one interesting thing about vintage story is that you can actually use your equipment inside of the crafting table so in order to make firewood which we need to make a fire we can take these birch logs we can put the axe on top of them and we can turn them into firewood 28 pieces of firewood Sounds good to me. If we use a knife on grass, we will get dry grass. If we then take that dry grass and we crouch and right click, similar to how we did the napping, uh, it will create this little fire pit in construction. All right, and so then if we take the firewood that we created and right click, bada bing, we've got a fire pit cold. So it is a fire pit, but it is not lit. And if you right click, you can open it up and see what's inside. We've got four pieces of firewood. I'm gonna add 10 in there for the night. We will go through it pretty quick. And it is currently not lit at all. So how do we light it? Well, we have everything we need. Dry grass takes one piece of dry grass and two sticks, and you have to do it in this pattern. So I often get it confused and think it can go this way, but it simply can't. It has to be top left dry grass, sticks on each corner. And that'll create a fire starter. Additionally, if you take a stick and just put it under dry grass, you can create a torch. You can also do this with cattails. I don't have any, unfortunately, but just know that you can swap out the dry grass with cattails uh, and you'll be good to go. With the fire starter in hand, and it is getting dark, so this is perfect timing. If we crouch and right click on our fire, we're gonna start attempting to light this thing. Uh, here we are. Look at this. It's a lit fire pit. Yeah, this is a nice little area aside from the wolves and the bears and the raccoons. I see you over there. I see you over there, buddy. And night is falling. And when night falls, you know what that means. It means it means the boys are coming out. 
Now, hopefully, with a bit of luck, we'll be safe here. Unless they come over and tear me from limb to limb in the middle of the night. But, you know, that's the risk we take. I'm gonna recommend making a dirt hut. Now, you can make one by clearly just punching dirt. Or, better yet, you can make a shovel. Make a shovel head. And you are now a proud owner of a shovel. And you can use this shovel to dig dirt just a little bit faster. I recommend, for starters, just doing this. Look. It's not the Taj Mahal. You have to understand. We just gotta get by. And, uh, just like that, this is our home. Now I'll teach you some things. Some fun little ditties. A torch. The most basic form of light. We made it. Now we need to light it. In order to light it, uh, there's a few things you can do. You can place it on the ground and take the fire starter to it. That'll light it. Right? So that's one way. And you can pick it up. You don't need to do that every time, though. We can just crouch in front of a campfire. Right click. And bada bing, bada boom. We've got a lit torch that way as well. You can place it on a wall. This is our little hut. We're looking good. We've got some light in here. This torch will go out in two days if it just sits on this wall. It will burn out, and that's the end of it. If it rains, that will also make it go out. So that's where we built the roof. We can also hold it, and if we press X on the keyboard, flip it to the other hand. So we can now hold a shovel and a torch. However, very important piece here is that if you hold the torch in the left hand, it will consume more hunger. The hunger right here you can see is at 100%. However, when I switch, the torch into the other hand it goes up to 120 percent and i have used all my berries and i am looking like i'm gonna starve so we need to conserve as much energy as we can we've eaten very little today however we did get these cattail roots earlier that i was telling you about and we can cook those up and we can eat them alternatively if we don't want to eat them you can also plant them which is very useful. And you're gonna need a lot of them as you continue to expand. So, saying that I choose to eat them over plant them, not the best choice. However, in this case, I think it's warranted. So I wanna take a moment, show you a little something something. If you press G, you'll sit down in front of the fire. This is a good way to conserve energy. Uh, you will use less energy while sitting, uh, as opposed to standing or obviously running around uh, doing all of that. So. Uh, sitting in front of the fire, staying warm. This is a great opportunity to talk about dieting. So there is a nutrition area here. If you press C, it'll take you into the character menu. And you will see all these bars over here on the right. Each of them, when filled all the way up, will provide 2.5 additional HP. So I would recommend focusing on fruit, vegetable, and protein in the early game. Trying to rotate between those three. Uh, you can get protein from small animals or fish. Fruit from berries and vegetables from mushrooms or wild crops. And in the early game, that's just the easiest way to improve survivability. And with that, the sun has set, the fire is blazing, and it's looking pretty peaceful out here on the open plains tonight so i'm going to end this tutorial here but there are of course more fundamentals to learn and if you're interested in learning more please check out my other video surviving your second day and uh one last parting gift before i go if in your world the boys come out to party at night and you'll know if they do just hide in your hut and it'll all blow over in the morning thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one